YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Alpha Strike by Zod. Very cool. Looks like the spaceship, I think. This is an FPV platform by Zod. We're not doing any FPV gear. We just have a 4S 2200 50C because our 30C was charging. And then we have a little stabilizer. We've got the receiver. We'll show the entire setup on that. Everything from unpackaging it to wiring it up to doing the radio setup on the NX8, which has been working great for us. Without further ado, this could be a little bit sketch on the launch. So we have to do this safely. There's two finger holes and then a third finger hole. So it's like bowling. But if you throw like this, you could cut your hand. So you need to be very careful. I'm gonna opt to launch like this. I'm gonna let it go like this for the sake of where the sun is. I'll get up altitude. I'll try to go up over the sun for you camera crew and then we'll work our way over there. Okay, throttle cuts off. This thing has insane power. See that? That's 30% power. Holy crap, that's insane. Oh my goodness. Feels pretty good so far. A little bit sluggish on the elevator. That surprises me big time. Looks cool. I did check the CG. I was very careful to make sure we got that set. Feel like we got a little bit of trimming issue on the elevator so far. That's 50% throttle there and it's just trucking along like crazy. Could use a little bit more expo or a little bit less rates. That's 100% throttle. A lot of noise, probably a pretty inefficient prop there. You hear that noise? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go out to the end of the driveway. I'll try to go slow for a minute here. So I changed my stabilizer setting gain a little bit. Just making sure I'm safe still. That's 100% throttle. Man, that thing just screams figuratively and literally. It's loud. Yes. Trying to get a little trim on my elevator there. You guys see that torque roll? It struggles to keep up with the torque roll. I need to increase the gains on the roll axis. I'm gonna try to do a couple passes like that. Are you comfortable where you are? Um, Can you go about four steps over toward the grass? Yeah. Okay, good job. That's fine, going down the runway this time, nice and slow. I'm out of the throttle, by, by the way, guys. We might need to set up braking on this one. Because I feel like braking would really get rid of that drag when you're gliding. Boy, it looks really cool in the air. She gets wonky. She gets wonky on the controls. Can you go over by the tall grass, please? Thank you, perfect. I'm gonna go a little bit faster, you good? That is nutty. That is nutty, guys. And you can hear it from forever away too. We gotta be breaking the sound barrier with that prop. Okay, coming back around, we're gonna try going real fast again. Big surprise, right? Whoa, I found, I found the limit for the stabilization. 
Guys, that's what you kind of got to do is you got to work that gain up until you hit the edge and you'll start oscillating. Jeez. Camera crew, how are you feeling about filming this thing? Ask me later. Boy, it looks cool in person though. I hope you guys are seeing any of it. That's completely out of throttle, folks. Okay, we got 10% throttle here just to show you how it slows down. Probably not very good. Like I said, it gets pretty wonky at the low end. I'm seeing if it'll alpha at all. It's our five minute timer. See what I'm talking about? It's just very spongy on the controls when you get down at the low end of the speed range. And you've got literal drag at the tail of your aircraft because of that prop. We need to set up braking is what we need to do. Very good roll rate, but there again, I'm not gonna do tons of that myself sorry camera crew i know that was terrible correction at the end there okay we're gonna try to land but i gotta get down the runway and then come back toward us here okay we're gonna go over the tree line, probably by the vampire killing zone, and then chop the throttle and just glide it in if we can. Like right here. Trying to get a high alpha, but there's no rudder. Well, there you go. Okay, so no high alpha, and you can see that thing falls fast when you're out of the throttle. Yeah, cool. I also tend to think that the CG maybe has this just a touch, a little bit nose heavy. You maybe need to come back a little bit so you can get into that alpha better because you depend on that for slowing down. If you can't do it while slowing down, you're gonna to have to be cruising along at like 60 to 70 miles an hour to land. So let's go see if there's any damage. I kind of doubt there is. Um, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna set up braking on the ESC, which we'll try the usual typical method if it's not in three pieces already. Looks like we're right here. Boy, that thing is small. It's so, it's so thin. It didn't, it just popped off the canopy, it looks like. So we'll just pick that canopy up. Battery shifted forward, but otherwise no damage. Just a little bit of, little bit of grass between the wings. Yes, everything bolts together on this too, which is awesome. Okay, I have to think it's not running, but it is. It is actually running, it was so quiet. Okay, so you see my battery shifted, but only probably on landing. Okay, so I could probably do it something like this maybe and get a little bit further CG on the, the tail in there. I'd like to see what type of battery we have left. You also notice those, you see those? They're in that upward position. That's very weird. You're supposed to be able to reset that. I actually don't know what the deal is. Oh, look. I don't know, are we out of power? Like legitimately out of power here? Did we unplug something? I don't think we did. It's not responding to anything except for the receiver or except for the uh, stabilizer. So I'm gonna unplug this and de-energize it. We'll take this and check it with the XBC 100 battery checker and come right back. All right, so we're just gonna test this one. Just walked inside here. Looks like we're at 40%. Unless that ESC has a timeout or something weird on it, I don't know what it would be. Okay, so this one is at 98%. Okay, so this is a 30C pack instead of a 50C pack. That plane is intense to fly. Um, 
The stabilizer, I can't quite figure out which mode I want to be in, whether it's which, which way is gonna work better for us, I'm not sure. Okay, so when you put the battery in, this is gonna come as no surprise to most of you guys, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway for a minute. Obviously get the thing energized and let it sit still. Okay, so everything is good. You watch for one more dance and it should be set. There, that dance, okay. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, right. Okay, so we're good there. Um, the CG marks are right here and here. So you see how it's, it, I've got it nose heavy right there. I'm gonna push this back just a little bit. I wanna move that CG back like, so that I'm on the edge of it. Yeah, I feel like it needs to be back just a hair. And then I think it's gonna give me a better flight performance. It flies really stable, but it just doesn't have enough. It doesn't have enough control authority, I don't think, which is weird. I figured it'd be way over controllable. So I moved it from being in the center of this where you put your finger to being on the edge of that. And we're gonna see how that works. Now also I wanna set up braking because braking is really critical on planes like this. You don't want a bunch of drag. Okay, so throttle cut is off. Okay, so obviously that's working. Throttle cut's back on and it's tested. So the way to do this is you actually unplug the battery. Be careful when you do this because people get cut doing this once in a while. Throttle cut is off, throttles all the way up. Hold secure the plane. Plug in the battery, continue holding it. Wait, it's gonna go into a programming mode. There's a dance. And then I shut that down. Should change the first mode. Now when it boots up, it's gonna do it different. I might have missed my mode. We'll have to wait for all the modes. Sometimes when you move the throttle stick down at the wrong time, it doesn't get the signal. The other way you can get out of that is you can just reboot. Throttle all the way up. Usually it's the first setting. Okay, so now we'll try and see if it got it. And this is for, for uh, braking on the ESC. Okay, so throttle cut is off. Throttle still going the same direction. And when we stop, it still feels like it's got throttle cuts on, unplug the power. Throttle cuts off, all the way up. Gonna wait longer this time even still. We're gonna hear a special song. Then we're gonna hear the first beep. Then there's a second beep. There's the third beep. Huh. The fourth beep. It's strange. There's one more beep. Yep, beep, beep. So this is where a programming guide will tell you exactly what the settings are for the ESC. It's gonna cycle back. So. Oh, so two long pulses. Okay, now it's gone back out. There's one, and then stick down. Okay, so I moved the stick up and down. I hope the camera crew was looking over here. Okay, good. So now it's starting, and I'm gonna unplug it. Now we're gonna try it again. Okay. Throttle cuts on, not on, but I can't say that that's on either. 
Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so I figured it out. Sorry guys, there's four different levels of brake modes on the Zod ESCs. So it's like soft, medium, hard, and then ultra hard or whatever, I don't know. So I'm gonna put the throttle up again and plug this in while securing the model. Okay, into programming mode, down. Oh, shoot. We programmed the throttle range, so that needed to be done anyway. So that's done. Throttle sticks all the way up, throttle cut is off. I jumped the gun, okay? Waiting for the beep, 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 beep. There's the beep. Then down, then one, two, I'll do three. Up, and then down. And then we'll just wait. Okay, good. Now I think we can just power cycle. 5%. Okay, power cycling now. Throttle cuts on, sticks down, everything's safe. We're gonna re-energize it. Okay, so it's doing its normal boot cycle. Okay. And that is braking now. See? It doesn't let it spin free. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna give you a click with the braking and we'll be right back. Okay, so we turn braking on, we're gonna give this a shot. Oh jeez, you see it roll? That's just nuts. Okay, so now out of the, out of the throttle and you should see that prop holding still. See, it's slowed down, it's not totally stopped. Okay. It feels a lot better in this position on the battery in terms of it's reliable. It just feels more controllable. It's not, it's not keeping those wings stable because I don't have my stabilizer up at all. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, out of the throttle. Oh yeah, feeling pretty solid right now. Look at that thing. Way slower, easier to control at slower flight performance. I don't feel like it gets away from me as bad. So yeah, I would say that the, yep, you can see it tractoring, but it's just barely moving and then finally stopped. Okay, full throttle and then out of the throttle. We need to put the braking up to the top setting, goodness gracious. That is crazy. Okay, out of the throttle all together. Camera crew, are you scared for your life yet? No. Me neither. But it is pretty stinking cool. Yeah. Guys, we're hoping our camera doesn't die while we're finishing this because our battery was low when we started. I think it's pretty sweet myself. Oh, buddy, I almost lost it there. That's when having a rudder's nice, guys. Rudders help you point that nose down when you're losing your good control and flight. Yeah, dang it, you see the canopy yeah. shoot up? Okay, so let's check for damage, we'll pause. Okay. Okay, so as you can see all as well, everything is totally fine. The grass likes to get stuck into this though. This is EPP foam, by the way. It's very squishy and reliably uh, able to resist damage. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next level of braking. By the way, everything's working still. Throttle cuts off. Wait for the song. 
down, one, two, and we're going to four, three, and then four, up, and acknowledge. Now it's gonna reboot. Okay, to be safe, I reboot from scratch. Every time I get done programming, throttle cuts back on. I like to start, have the safety habits built in. And I realize we haven't even landed this thing yet, so let's check the, the braking now. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty strong braking. Okay, so we're gonna launch again. You good there? Yeah. We're gonna try to get a landing. Throttle cuts off. Wow, look at that, that's so weird, look. That's nutty. Did you see what's going on there? What's it doing? So we turned on the highest level of braking and the motor had some strange behaviors where it would stick with the throttle position. So our throttle cuts off, throttles all the way up. We're gonna set this back to the third position, which is the highest that we can handle and tolerate on this plane. It seems, still seemed to work pretty good. Okay, so we're listening for the song on the Yeti. Then down with your throttle stick. Are you looking at the sticks? Okay. So that's one, that's two, we're going for three. Then up. Then down to exit. Okay, it's gonna reboot as usual. Okay, now I'm gonna power it down. I always power it down to be on the safe side. Sorry, we ran out of battery, folks. Okay, so that's working. Braking is working, throttle cuts on and tested. All right, so we're gonna just get a good landing for you guys before we call it quits. Okay, so we're basically back. We put the braking to level three of four. Four made it have a very strange throttle response. It was almost like there was four distinct positions in the throttle range. So I don't know what the deal was. It did have very strong braking, but I think it was braking between those steps. We put another battery in. I didn't even give you guys a landing with this thing. I gave you two crashes over on the hill there. So we're gonna try taking off again. This thing takes off just fine, by the way. And uh, when I say just fine, I mean, it's like you can take off any direction you want. It's so powerful. Watch this. See, told you it could take off any direction. So don't forget to check your control surfaces. That's what I did wrong there. Before I took off, I had reset the braking and I checked the throttle and that was it. And guess what? I lost it all. Like complete loss of control. We were very lucky the way that crash went down. And this is what happened. Yes, I've already vetted this for a long time. This is a dangerous battery. It's leaving the house immediately. But <clears throat> just wanna let you know, that's what happens when you lose control. It's a little bit scary and that's the first time I've lost control in a very long time. It's not the first time I've lost control. I've made mistakes. I've had control failures, but I haven't lost control. I gave that thing full throttle and it went and I had nothing. And luckily the parabolic arch it took, took it right to an unoccupied field and then ended its own life. As you can see, it actually fared pretty good given the fact that it ran into the ground at like probably 100 miles an hour or close. So anyway, that's that. It's the end of an era. Didn't last very long, but I'm gonna just make one recommendation. If you want this thing to last a long time, you may consider using the AR637 or the 631. Um, not saying that the receiver was the problem, and I'm not saying that the stabilizer was the problem. I'm saying that I made a mistake in not checking the surfaces, but I am not super ultra confident on why that all went down because really it should have worked. 
But anyway, lesson learned, sort of, again. I'm gonna go take care of this. By the way, don't put that in your garbage can, especially if it's still got charge in it, and this thing does. In fact, I'm curious if we'll actually get voltage out of it. So, you have to be super careful with these things. Oops. <laughs> Doesn't even know what happened to it. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, this thing has basically full charge, almost full charge. What is it, 95%. So I hate to waste the charge on this battery, but it's going bye-bye right now. All right, guys, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And in RC, everybody loses once in a while. So anyway, good playing, bad presentation. My apologies. Come back for more. Actually, YouTube, it's garbage bag. Time to open this thing up. I know exactly what it is because I cheated. Ah! Oh my goodness, it is a Zod Mark III series. The next generation FPV experience. Of course, we won't be doing it as an FPV plane because we don't get into that stuff. And yet we do put the plane together and show you how it works as a plane because we like line of sight flying here on Brian Phillips RC. Maybe at some point we'll do that. I know a lot of you guys are into FPV. We just haven't gotten into it. Okay, so just like last time, the Zod packaging has information about their other offerings. It's got some skid plates here. That's what those black things are. Last Zod I did, I think we did figure that out. The one previously I didn't. Here's a two-bladed prop. If there's a three-bladed prop, we're gonna go with a two-bladed prop. It's supposed to be a little better for speed. Packaging is bubble wrap. It's a little bit unusual for planes, but very robust. It's thick. Let's see if we have any damage. I don't think we will. This looks a lot like the space shuttle. That's why I got this one because I thought it was cool. Ball links. Cool. Brass. Very nice. Solid construction. Nice joints here for the wires. Extension cord. That's the... Whoa. What? Okay. I don't quite understand why we need to have a quick release on the wing, but I mean, it's still cool. I'll take it. I can't tell if this is just a sticker. I think it's just a sticker, but it's nice because it makes a really sharp, clean edge, which is super cool. Let's look for carbon fiber. Yeah, I don't see any reinforcements, but the wing is thick and strong. See, compared to its size, it's just really got a lot of strength to it. So the packaging so far has been good. Left and right wing, let's just take a look at both of them. Give them two chances at failure here. Oh yeah, we're good there. Servos go up, which is smart. Since it's a belly lander, I like the winglet thing. That's cool. But the servos, the control horn points up as opposed to pointed down. Uh, when you land on your belly, you don't want to have that thing sticking down. Okay, then it looks like vertical stabilizers. There's two of them. They go up at an angle on this one. The last is odd we built. We weren't sure which direction they were supposed to go. Ooh, they are screwed together though. That's really nice. The last is odd we had to use. Double-sided tape of all things. And I wasn't a big fan of that. I thought it was a little bit shoddy. But it was such a lightweight plane, didn't matter. Okay, so there's two noses in here, it looks like, maybe. Maybe one's like the back end and one's the front end. Okay, so this one has a carbon fiber connection point here. This is all glued together, it feels like. So that's one possible nose. And I believe this is another possible nose. Unless they mistakenly sent two, and that'd be very weird. Nope, different style. This one here has accommodation for cameras and FPV gear. So very cool. Not a big fan of having extra parts to hang on to, but that is really cool. Um, if you have multiple different rigs, or maybe you don't always fly FPV, you can actually have one set up and then just switch them out. Hmm. 
carbon fiber joiner for the wings, wing spar. Is that carbon fiber? Yeah, that's carbon fiber. I was thinking maybe it was actually just black. You can kind of tell because they're light. See how light it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely carbon fiber. And plus the noise. If it's, if it's carbon fiber, it's more dingy like metal. And if it's, yeah, you can hear that, that kind of high pitch noise. Versus like fiberglass. Yep, if it was fiberglass, it'd be more like dull. Yeah, yeah, plastic sounding. Yep, exactly, good point. Okay, then the fuse. Spaceship looking fuse. Very good packaging. Super surprised how well that went. Um, I guess I'm, I shouldn't say super surprised. I'm very, I've been very impressed with Zod. This is heavier than I thought it was gonna be. What is in there? It is weird. It's a nice big flat belly on it. What is this? Why is there an opening there? How does that come off? Does it go? Does it come off? I don't know, you might have to cut that off. I think that might have been a manufacturing hatch for them to get their, their tray in. Okay, so that comes off super easy. Nice, strong rare earth magnets in there. Uh, comes with a motor. Oh no, do we have to install that? Camera crew's cringing as I do it. Oh, it would have made it too long. That's why they did that. And it bolts on by the way, hon. So look, just slide it in. Oh, that is sweet. That is such a nice fit. Huh. I wonder if there's some trick to get those wires through. I think I'm gonna have to, oh my goodness, that is like in there already. Oh wow, it did not wanna come out. Yeah, there's a gap on the top and the bottom for which to feed your wires through. So we can do one or the other. You see how there's nut zerts in that wood? Mm-hmm. Also, you have to keep in mind there's gonna be bolts that pass through, so you have to kind of you know, use your wisdom on that because really I'd like to have my wires on the bottom since it's a bigger opening, but I don't think we're gonna be able to do that because you need to pass your bolts through. Okay, so that's that's everything, folks. That's, that's an empty box. And it looks like, this is like one thick box, by the way. It what is like a really nice, it's like, well, I guess we're gonna keep spare parts. <clears throat> well, I think their, their rationale is that people will keep the packaging and use this to like store the plane which to be honest with you, I suppose that's probably not a terrible idea. Um, okay, so we have an ESC here. Looks like we're a 40 amp Zod Mark II series brushless motors. It's five volts at three amps for the BEC. That's pretty good. Two through four S LiPo. So I was figuring we'd probably run this on three S and uh, don't know what size. It's got an XT60 on there. Then of course the output to the receiver here. And then it's also got Believe it or not, it's got a JST in parallel. That's pretty sweet. So you could run this on a JST equipped battery or you can run it on something else. I'm not sure if I wanna go for 2200 3S or maybe even 1300, just kind of depends on what we, I'm, I'm feeling kind of along the lines of 2200 3S. If it's capable of 4S, so that'd be pretty sweet. Sure, it'll be like way faster that way. Okay, so I'm just lifting here. Okay, a couple magnets. That is a lot of mounting space. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so if you're doing this as FPV, then you are gonna have a ton of options for gear. Cause that is, not only can you put it in a lot of different places, but it's just super, like tons of space. Um, okay, so let's build this thing quick. Uh, put the wing spar through. Where's the nuts and stuff? Probably. Oh, they're in that bolt sack over there. Okay. So we'll slide this on. Oh yeah, that was so easy. But then we have to put a screw in there. I suppose it's probably wise to maybe get the screws figured out now so we don't forget or miss something. Are there actual instructions? Got some Velcro here for the battery. Zod sticker, wing joiner screws. Okay, here we go. That's what I was looking for right there. Cause I said, that's a pretty long reach there, folks. Yeah, see you stick it through this wood spot here, I think. Is that where that goes? So 
see that? It goes like that. Yep, that's right. It goes through the wood. So we'll slide this back on, attach it like this, and then slide this through. Ah, there we go. And then you just got a thumb nut in there, or a thumb bolt in this case. It's a plastic, it's like a nylon, black nylon plastic. We'll see how tight it gets. Feels pretty good so far. It's a little bit awkward because there's not much room to get your fingers to actually make that spin. You can definitely do it though. That is awesome compared to doing it with a double-sided tape like the last Zod we did. Mm -hmm. So very happy with that. This is a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be too. So that's pretty sweet. I always kind of like the bigger planes. That's a, that's a cool size. I like that size. So there's, there's not a ton of planes in this size class. And you get into that 800, 850 millimeter. What size is this thing? I don't know. Does it say on the box? It might say on the insert. Yeah, maybe it does. This is the plug-in. By the way, this is the plug-in plug -in play. They have an FPV ready and then they have a kit form, okay? So, oh, there's the specs. Yes, it is on there. So there's your 650 millimeters, okay. Wingspan is 620. The length is 650. Oh, there's your recommended battery too. What is it? 4S2200 or 3250C or higher. 3200 or 2200? Yeah. Okay, that's a pretty big battery. Well, in that case, I wanna make sure that I've got a 3200 gone. So you, they want a 2200 4S? That seems like a really big battery. No, 2200 4S is totally reasonable in my opinion, but 3200 4S seems like a pretty big battery. So that's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll just pop these into the S2200 smart battery charger here and we'll get those ones cooking while we're working. Don't really have to do anything beyond that. It's already working. Okay, so now that we have the battery charging, let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, it seemed like that strap was big. Zod gives us some of the best battery straps in the industry, which is funny, but I can tell you right now that thing is gonna be pretty big for this battery. I'm a little concerned about that actually, like it may not be able to work. Okay, so this is gonna slide in here, but I'm not sure if it's like, yeah, it slides in on the top. See how it's kind of got like a... Oh. That's weird. Oh, it screws in from the inside. Yeah, it screws in from above. Let's see if we can get that figured out. See, there's two like this, and then there's one like this. So, presumably, these ones are for the vertical stabilizers because they're flat. Yep, that's got to be it. See, that's going to go like that. Very cool. Wrong, right, I think. Yep, it keys in as well. So this goes in and then down, in and then down. Very good, very good fit, very easy, very self-explanatory. So once this gets done, gosh, we're gonna have what, like 10 minutes in putting this thing together and that's gonna include putting in the ESC. I don't like the way this fits right now. Oh, I had to push it down further, folks. Once I got to push down further, then I'm having still kind of, I feel like I'm bottoming out. You see what I'm talking about? Mm. That's not good. Feels like I'm bottomed out, and I am, actually. There's two of those little, then you have to use a screwdriver. No, I'm going way, way harder now, and it's going in. Okay. Yep, I'm just going past. I think the end of the nut zert probably had some glue on it and so it wasn't allowing it to pass through. Okay, now it's on there good. It's in there all the way down tight. See that, nice tight joint. Okay, so we're gonna save this for the nose. We're gonna get the other vertical stabilizer on there. This is a really easy assembly, but I'm not gonna put it in that box because even though we have hundreds of planes assembled in the basement, What's one more? What's one more? It feels like it's robust enough that it's gonna hold up to being kind of put on a pile of planes. Okay. Yeah. Feels solid. 
I mean, there's a little bit of squishiness between the joints, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna be an issue. See what I'm talking about? So I don't know if this is gonna be an incredibly fast plane or if it's gonna be incredibly not fast, but I can tell you that I really like the way it looks so far. I'm happy with, uh, with the build performance so far. Then this has to be it. Uh, it does have a screwdriver on the top. Oops. This one's gonna be a pain to get at without a mm. screwdriver. I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver. Probably a Phillips, probably a Phillips number two and then a small China screwdriver and we'll see which one kind of meets the demands of the job better. Okay. Got a Phillips number two and a China screwdriver. Eh, it might work. Probably more like a number one. I think the China screwdriver is gonna be better because I can't quite make the angle and the China screwdriver is gonna allow you to get in there. You see that little relief? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, way better. See how there's like a little cutout for it? Now watch as I tighten it, it's gonna suck down in here. See that, how it's pulling in? That is surprisingly tight. Wow, Ow. caught my finger weird. Okay, so, it's just, it just seems like it's gonna do well gliding and sliding. Yeah. It's just, I can't resist throwing the thing across the living room. I mean, it just has, it feels really light and really strong. I wanna see it fly bad now. Okay, so I don't need this. That can go over here. Um, all right, so let's talk about these two screws. There's two screws here. I'm not sure if those screws are provided. Um, oh, they're for the motor. motor. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, let's put that together real quick. So the motor wiring, I'm surprised, you know, it's funny because all these instructions that are, you know, they're online, they're out there. I'm not really super worried about the fact that there are online instructions, but you know, like I kind of would like to see it in the box. Is there instructions? No, nope, those are just stickers. I thought maybe it was under there. Okay, so you notice I'm feeding one wire at a time. Just, you can just go right there. See, I'm just sticking in one wire at a time. It's gonna be hard to get them through though. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the China screwdriver and just pass it along because those nut, those uh, nut zerts are kind of getting in the way. Okay, once you get it lined up, I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna lay the motor up here and balance it. And then I can use gravity to help me push these wires through one at a time. Yep, I got the first one through. So you see how it's through now? Mm-hmm. It's just tight, so it's just one of those awkward steps that you get to. It's not hard, it's awkward. You have to do one at a time though, otherwise there's not enough room. Okay, that one went through okay too. And then sometimes, you know how these get soldered? Come up here close. See how that's soldered offset? Mm -hmm. You just run into that. So. As a result, it gets a little bit tight in the opening, but you have a good place to push against with the screwdriver. Okay, so three wires in. Now that they're in, I can feed them as a lot. See how they just poked out? Sweet. Tip the motor mount up, slide it in. Now push your wires back down. This is really nice, like really machined well. The last sod we had was exactly the same setup in terms of being super, super solid on assembly, components. Okay, see, it's in. It's very unfortunate we have that ugly thing sticking up. Yeah, that's too bad. Now you could put that down if you were really like, but look at your flat plane here. Mm -hmm. That's like, I don't wanna screw that up. All right, screws. So I don't know if you guys are into this whole taking your planes completely apart every time you use them, but I am not into it. I don't know where you guys would have the time to do that if you're legitimately taking a plane down all the time every time you use it. Um, I think it depends on your storage. 
so. That's true. I mean, if, if you're, you're in a tight spot. It, yeah, but you could just tear the wings off of here. Yeah. And you, I mean, you're gonna gain a little bit of extra length, but I mean, if you can't fit this in your car, then, you know, you might wanna think about getting a bigger car. Or a scooter. Like, yeah, a scooter would probably work just fine for this. Just strap it on your back. Actually, some people would put these in backpacks. Yeah. But I mean, you barely even, you could totally take off the wings and backpack this thing in, no problem. Maybe you would take those off just for that reason though. I don't know. I feel like I didn't get this screwed all the way in. Mostly because I didn't. Oh. Did you get sidetracked? I got sidetracked. Oh. Probably a good thing I got remembered to do that though. I don't think it would have helped with the flight performance, the wing coming off. I think two wings usually are better. It depends, yeah. But I would say generally speaking, that's true. All right, so we have an ESC here. The electronic speed control um, needs, we need a battery lead up here. We need to get this, actually all these leads can go up. And then depending on what type of battery we use, we can, uh, I don't know if this is power that's actually gonna be taken off or something else. You know what, that, that's, that's actually an output for uh, power to another flight controller. This is not what you would typically receive power from. Mm. That would be provisional power to another device. So my apologies, I misspoke early, earlier. Okay, so I'm just gonna go color for color on this and I'm actually gonna try to get my wires to go under that carbon fiber joiner. Oh. And the reason I'm doing that is because then it will secure them in place because they seem to be about the exact dimension that's required to secure. Yeah, but they're gonna be past it by the time I plug in. So, hmm, I gotta think on this for a second. Might be just a bit of a pain to get through there too. But that would hold the ESC down. Yeah, it would. That would be nice to have that held down. I'm just trying to think if I'm gonna have to pull that wing joiner out to be able to do that and then slide the, the thing back through. If you pulled it halfway out, could you I, like, get them under the edge? That's what I was gonna do, yeah. but then I have to undo the whole wing. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go above, who cares? Probably me if something goes wrong. Who cares if that ESC whacks around in there? It doesn't do anything important like provide power for the entire flight system. It's not like an elevator. <clears throat> yeah, optional elevators. Yeah, see Ian, optional see, elevators. He's come up twice today. Oh, he's like super popular. I'm making the comeback. Yeah, I can't feed that under very easy. I could zip tie it on there. Seems like a lot of work. I think I'm just gonna do one of these where it's like, yep. Oh, well, looks good. Looks good to me. I like it. Okay, so we got some Zod stickers. Skid plates, let's, uh, let's affix those. This thing looks pretty sweet. That was a really easy build. Camera crew, do you wanna take anything back? Nope. Figured you wouldn't. <laughs> let's put the prop on here. Okay, so this prop is two-bladed prop. Last time we did a Zod plane, we had a three-bladed and a two-bladed. I opted for the three-blade. Many of you reminded me that I should have used the other one. You were correct. <laughs> okay, so when you look at a prop, the arrows, or not the arrows, the uh, writing is gonna tell you where, uh, if you're looking at the prop as though it were flying at you, okay? Can you see the writing? No. This is a pusher prop. Or at least, actually it's a pusher or a tractor, it doesn't matter, this is six by four, five but it's gonna go, this way is counterclockwise, okay? Counterclockwise, and it's gonna go forward, okay? If it was a reverse prop, it would go the other way, but it would still pull forward, okay? So the reason I go over that with you is, look, you need to know what direction to mount this, obviously. So you want it to cut the air like this and then push, okay? There's also these little things, which are spacers. There's one for the front and one for the back, or at least one for the back. I usually take them and put them up against the motor, find the one that works, and then I twist like this, okay? Until the thing breaks off. 
or in this case it's being a pain, so I just take it off and then spin it off. Okay, I do not go out of my way. Beyond that, I just stuff it in there. Then the other side, <clears throat> I'm gonna validate that it is also the same size, and it is. Okay, so you'll note that there's two of each, and that's because you use both the front and the back. See, the back is plugged, the front is not. The front is now plugged. You don't have to plug the front, but I like to plug the front if I can, if it fits. The reason I do that is because then I know it's, it's gonna work. I know it's gonna fit. I don't like the, that doesn't have very much purchase on it though. Makes me a little bit nervous. I thought it would push in there a little better and it didn't really. By the way, you'll note that I missed this little washer doohickey, see? That's supposed to actually sandwich the whole thing in. Uh, I just didn't grab it. Don't forget to get that. See what I'm talking about? That thing. Oh. Because then you have texture on the. Mm, for the prop to grab yep. on. Yep. And then you'll have, you'll have a flat, slippery side there. Let's see if there's any play on it when we put it on. You see what I'm talking about? I don't like that wiggle play. Even though it's gonna be held tight, I'm not sure if I should care. Hmm. See, now that I put that on there, there's, there's less, but I'm still not so sure I like it. Feels sloppy to me. I'm gonna take it off this time. Okay, the prop is going the right direction, so it's gonna push the air forward, or it's gonna push the plane forward, push the air backward. I'm gonna put this little lock, modified lock washer back on. Because it's a modified lock washer, I am gonna have to actually use a tool to tighten it. In my case, I'm gonna use a crescent wrench because if I use the uh, correct tool for the job, I would have to go and find the correct tool for the job, so we'll just use this. If you had a nut driver, it'd be nice for something like this, but just in case the shaft protrudes through a lot, it sometimes screws up nut drivers from being real helpful on these step, on this step. Also, some of you guys are cringing because I put the prop on in the uh, setup of the plane, but at some point you're gonna basically be putting the prop on, so you might as well get it out of the way. Try not to cut yourself. Um, take note of the grabbing point. See that? So when you throw this, you better be careful not to cut your fingers off because this thing is gonna spin and it's gonna wanna cut your hand. It could hurt. So you may wanna launch something else. You may wanna launch something more like this where you've got, in my case, I hold the transmitter. I have a lanyard, so I would normally have a lanyard here, I'd be controlling the throttle with my left hand. So I might come over here and kind of do a discus style lanch where I get the, the throttle going and then I'll just kind of do like this and then let the throttle take the plane as it gets into position. Or you can also do where you hold it like this and you throttle up and then you just kind of like launch it that way. Either way are quite easy. You can do an overhand throw, but you see there's not like an amazing fuselage to hang on to. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna do an overhand throw like this, I'm saying you may wanna do it without any throttle and then get on the throttle as soon as you can. So just remember, it's up to you guys to be safe. This hobby is a safe hobby. Um, it, the perception is that there's danger and really the danger is from that spinning thing and that stored energy in the battery. And if you can control those two items and mitigate the risk to virtually nil by just no, doing normal behaviors, then you're gonna basically not get hurt doing this hobby, okay? If you crash into stuff once in a while, you'll be surprised how insanely remote the chances of injury uh, or death are. It's like almost nothing. So you don't need to be worried about that, but just be a little bit careful with props because people do get cut from time to time and it's one of the more severe injuries we have in the hobby. And plus we need these things to have dexterity to run controls like this. 
And if you get cut, it's not impossible that you could hurt your ability to do this. So you gotta be careful. Um, okay, so with that being said, skid plates, last step. Super easy, super easy build, the way we like them. Very thick, strange material. Okay, I don't really understand while, you know, it's not, not a big deal to put this on. I don't really understand why we put this on. Like, why is this not like put on when we get it? I can't think of a reason why you would not put it on. Yeah, I don't know, it does seem kind of strange. It's very thick, very thick, my goodness. <clears throat> Backing's not coming off of this one very good. There we go. I just got the right corner. This is 3M. 9448A, double coated tissue tape. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's just the, that's the tape on the that's bottom. That's the backing. Yeah, it's just the backing. That looks like fabric, like denim material from the bottom side. It, yeah. Hmm. That's the tissue tape. Interesting. It's the tape, the yeah. 3M tape. Hey, look across the street. They're taking the hay across the street. Looks like you about sucked up some corn there. You might have. Oops. The cattle will like it. Yeah. Okay, so we have our skid plates on there. Looks really cool. Looks like re-entry protection, which I think is cool looking. Um, I wish that same material was used here because it would really help the leading edge mm. to be protected. I'm gonna take this screwdriver and see if I can get to, yes I can. There's nowhere to go with that screw though. It's totally tight. Okay, couple thoughts. One, I don't like that play at all. See that? Oh. That's not very good. I don't think I did it wrong. You suppose it's possible I did it wrong? But we don't have any other hardware or anything. No, I know, but like, was there another way I could have installed that? Did I, did I maybe just get it wrong? See how tight it's in there? I've really got it tight. Oh my goodness, I could barely release it. You need to maybe be careful not to overdo it too much. Hmm. Just pull that out there, slide this out. Oh boy, that's in there. That's in there good. I don't really see, is that supposed to go under? No, that's gotta be right. Show the people the assembly there. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a It doesn't seem like I did option. that wrong, does it? No. I thought maybe you were supposed to slide it under, but like, I don't think it would ever line up. Mm -mm. Okay. We'll just slide that back in. I mean, it's not gonna fall off. I'm not worried about it falling off in the air or anything like that. I'm just thinking along the lines of, I'd like that to be tightened up. So we'll probably just use a piece of tape because I don't want it flopping around in the wind. Okay, then stickers. What are we doing with stickers? We gonna do any stickers? Looks like it. We're doing one right there, because that's important. And then we'll do ones on the control surfaces, because okay. I always think that looks cool. They didn't give us any instructions on where to put them that day. No, not unless it shows on. Is this one even on here? Is it? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So I guess you get to put them wherever you want. I'm pretty sure it's not going to impact the performance of the plane. Probably not. But I, I do like I do like the way that they look. They're nice looking stickers. And they're applying nicely too. You know, sometimes we get stickers and they're really hard to peel and it's like, really? Like of all the things that you could get right, it's like yeah. you think stickers would be pretty much a no-brainer. Okay, so then let's do if we can get one to look nice down here, let's do that too. Cause yeah, you got the carbon fiber reinforcements down here on the Televons. This is a Televon configuration. So you have the elevator and ailerons uh, working on the same surfaces. So we'll talk about how to set that up on the radio system, of course. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe we'll just go here and see how it looks. Looks kind of cool. Um, we've got even more little stickers. You don't have to use the stickers. You don't have to? I have to. Because I want it to look awesome. 
know about you guys, but I actually enjoy this step. And then I'm gonna put them on. Oh no, it didn't go straight. I did notice that the mold release on this foam was like kind of not real great for these sticking. It's got a little bit of a sticky um, or a little bit of a waxiness to it that makes these things pretty easy to get off of there. Of course, I can't get my fingernails to hang on. There we go. I bet this one's not gonna wanna stick well now that I peeled it off. Eh, it went down okay. They look black on here, but then when you release them from the backing, they look gray. Did you notice that? I didn't notice that. You didn't? I didn't. I'm going to put it on the winglets because I think that'll be super cool like that. Just so I don't forget what it is. Okay. Midair. Could be tragic. Is your eyesight that good? Yes. Well, you're the one that has to film it. I don't have to read it when it's going by. I agree. Well, so far so good. So obviously you guys can check the video description. You can buy one of these for yourself. Obviously we're affiliated with a bunch of different companies. Uh, this is one of the companies we work with. And uh, this one came from Banggood. So you can check the link, buy one for your very own there. And then you can help support our channel with the small commissions that they give us when you guys buy these things. We really like to support the hobby in a way where we can help you to sift through the thousands, the literal thousands of choices that you're gonna have every time you go to spend RC money. And uh, I can tell you this right now, the Zod has been pretty good. Actually, we've done batteries by Zod. We've done a couple of different models by Zod and we've been impressed. It just seems like good quality stuff. Now it's not everything to everybody and I'm not trying to say that, but I can tell you that I've been happy. I've been satisfied with the quality level, which is good. So. Definitely happy with that. Obviously they have lots of other choices. And if you're into FPV, you're gonna be definitely a little bit more geared toward doing Zod stuff. We don't do the FPV side of things because we can't show it on camera uh, without having a 107 exemption. So we just don't push that. We don't wanna cause problems for ourselves. Um, hey, what about that? Can we do that? That's gonna look like crap. Is that I, meant to go on there or is that just like a... This is just like a sticker. sticker. Yeah, like I, I would have I wouldn't be able to see my laptop if I did that. It would go on the black nicely. I don't know. I think it kind of doesn't match the style of the plane necessarily. What do you think? Mm. Let's do this. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so the next step of course is gonna be to do some radio setup. So let's talk real briefly about what we're using today. Um, we've got a couple of different batteries here. I guess it doesn't matter which battery we use. Um, we've got a little six channel receiver. We've used these before. This is an iRange X RM601 micro receiver. It's very light. This of course comes from Banggood. We'll have links to this, the plane, and then the stabilizer we're gonna use as well. I like to use stabilizers as you guys already know. This is of course gonna be a PPM output if you want, if you're gonna use a flight controller or you can use one of the six channels. And then there's a bind plug here. It does come with a bind, uh, bind plug. So we'll just get that stuck on there right now because we're gonna need it shortly. And then in review, we'll talk about what this is here in a second. This is a stabilizer, NX3, the new generation of three axis stabler gyros. Okay, so it's got some double-sided tape, which is nice. We're gonna use that. Um, if you could just read through this and let mm -hmm, me know sure. yep, how to I'll... set that up, that'd be great. Oh wait, there's also English okay. over here. Ooh, look at that fancy dance. Oh my goodness. What? Very important. The controller has to relearn center position after installation, replacing a new radio system or making a trimming, trimming or sub trim change with the, within the transmitter. Otherwise the servos may move to one side automatically when switching to hold mode. To do this, just quickly flip the flight mode switch twice between rate mode and hold mode within one second. Okay, so it relearns. That's how you relearn the home position. Okay, that shouldn't be a big deal by the way, camera crew. I can see that cringe in your eye. It's really, it's not a big deal, I promise. We've had that on other stabilizers before. So the stabilizers, uh, 
The reason we picked the stabilizer is because I wanted to find something that you guys can buy all at one stop. And uh, obviously we do a lot of AR-631s on the channel and we do a lot of AR-637Ts on the channel, but that is a pretty expensive option. Um, and that's not to say that that's not a good option. It is a very good option. So obviously we have links to that stuff below as well. Yes, another Chinese screwdriver. Awesome, super, oh. super flat one. We needed to like round out our set of 20. Yeah, right, For exactly. Kids. So what we're gonna do is we'll, you know, as, as customer, you guys have already seen this fly because we put that at the beginning of the video. So if you're still watching, thanks by the way. Um, most people don't watch the radio setup for good reason because it's long and boring and tedious. You made that in the box. I did. You couldn't do that again if you tried. <laughs> no, I couldn't. <laughs> so looking at this device, we have an aileron out, elevator out, rudder out, aileron out. So that says aileron R out. So if you were doing flap rounds, you'd be able to do that, I believe. Then you have aileron in, elevator in, rudder in, aux in, and aileron in. So what we're gonna do is we have to wire in now this device is gonna need to be centrally located in the plane. I don't know what direction it needs to sit. That's one thing I gotta figure out. This is gonna actually feed the pulse width modulation in. And then this is gonna go out to the controls. Well, in our case, there's only two wires. So it's actually quite simple, okay? These, well, there's throttle too, but throttle doesn't even get passed through the stabilizer because it doesn't stabilize anything. Okay, so we'll pull these covers off. So you've got like this one here is the right side. Aileron out. See, I don't know, V-tail. And then aileron two, delta. We need delta. Or V-tail, hold on. Do we need delta or V-tail? I can never remember this. I think it's delta. You're asking the wrong camera crew. Let's try Delta. Okay. Delta's on. Oh man, I need the China screwdriver already. Delta's on. See the dip switch? Okay. And I'm just gonna say, well, how do, oh, there's the minus. So the minus is this direction. Well, there's one aileron. And then here's the other aileron. No pesky elevator. Then this is throttle, it gets plugged into the transmitter, which is probably gonna be on channel one, I would assume. Channel one minus is down, I believe, on this. Okay. Now I'm not 100% sure I've got this right. I probably won't get it right the first crack, so we'll just try our best. Then let's say channel two is gonna be something, so we'll put channel two out to one of these, which is gonna be like. It's usually right aileron. Well. Shh, aileron in, elevator in. We need elevator and a aileron. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's gonna mix the controls, guys. So that's why, you know, when, when you do a, a VTEL mix, you're, you're manipulating the ailerons and the elevator simultaneously. But you're, you know, you have elevator and then you have ailerons, but it's doing them through both all the time, okay? So it's, it's a mix, but it's mixed in the controller. That's why I said I'm probably not gonna get it right the first time, so we'll just try it this way. So you have an elevator in and you have an aileron in. We're not worried about rudder because there is no yaw authority at all on here. The only way you'd be able to do yaw is if you cut in rudders and then that would be another wire, okay? Then you'd have a wire out from here and a wire to there, and then you'd have the wire that goes out to wherever the rudder channel is. Um, you can also make rudder by creating as um, some sort of a aileron up, aileron down at the same time like this, and you'd make a break on the opposite side and it'll yaw the plane. I've only done that like one time and it was weird. So it didn't work great. Then we need auxiliary in. That's gonna be like our gain control. Auxiliary in. So why don't we just pick like a high channel, like channel six, like channel six, just below the PPM. Okay, channel, this would be the PPM. This is the bind. Okay, so now I don't know what position all this stuff needs to sit yet. So we're just gonna, let's pretend like it's gonna go this way. Okay, I don't know if that's right. It doesn't really matter at this point. So we'll just kind of stick it, stick it there and hope it's about right. And then we can kind of fiddle with stuff. In fact, 
what I might do just to kind of keep things simple and honest for now, we might just take a little bit of tape and hold it in position until we have a chance to actually get everything bound up mm. because it's just, this is temporary anyway. So I'm just going to make it a little ball of tape just to hold it where I think it's going to end up. And then I can apply the proper double-sided tape that's much harder to remove. So we'll just stuff it down there. Now this can sit anywhere. So just for now, this is good enough to do our testing. Can that stuff go clear to the back if you need room for the battery? It depends on the CG and yes, it probably will have to move back. I was thinking about putting it in the middle spot there mm -hmm. and then putting the receiver back here. But I tend to try to keep the receiver away from the ESC if possible. Um, mostly because it's possible you'd get noise back there, electrical noise. Mm. So you don't have that noise. It's gonna cause problems. Gonna drop that back down. And then this is going to bind. So we'll leave that accessible so we can all see what's going on. And 3S is plenty to do our binding. And so obviously in this case, we are going to be uh, plugging in an IC3 to an XT60 and that'll be fine, okay? But we're not quite ready to do that because we have to set up a model now on our radio system. So we're gonna do that next. Um, throttle cuts on, stick is down. We're gonna turn this on. I think I have it on like the night radian, yeah. So we can click in the function list, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, jump down to model select. Now you can press these two buttons together at the same time and it'll do the same thing, but we can't show you this part, so. Model select, add new model. Okay, you can come back. And then we can create. And the only reason we have to do that is because sometimes you have new models that we can't share. And I'd rather not forget and accidentally show it. Okay, so we've created a new model. The model type is gonna be an airplane, which is already what we set in the model name or the new model. Then we do a model name, it's number 59 colon space. And then this is where we would type in like the actual name. So we'll type it in and come right back. Okay. All right, so we've got the Zod Alpha Strike 620, which is what this thing's called. This is where you're gonna set up your wing type. Now, because we're using a flight controller in the receiver, or excuse me, in the uh, stabilizer, we're gonna treat it like a regular plane, okay? And you're like, but that doesn't make any sense. I know, it doesn't. If, well, it depends on the flight controller, but generally speaking, you're gonna do it that way. Hey, that's pretty good. And I don't know what we're gonna do for channels yet, so let's just walk out. Uh, did it happen to say a time? I don't think it did. So we're gonna set throttle cut first, set it to switch H. Okay, so now I can see it's, oh, uh, dang it. Acknowledge it, then you can test. See how it's not moving? Then when I turn it off, it does move. That's what you want. Throttle cut is on. Timer, one time is active. <clears throat> at one minute we want nothing, at 20 seconds we want nothing, at 10 seconds I want voice for countdown, and expiration I want tone and vibrate, and then a tone every one minute. Okay, so throttle cuts on, starts counting down, keeps counting down, regardless of position, we clear the time. All right, so we're good there. So now we can go ahead and bind the plane. This is where you're gonna to wanna to be extra careful in case something goes wrong, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna get cut. Okay, so throttle cut is on. I'm gonna power this down. Power's down. Okay, once the power is off, now this is where it's a little bit awkward just because the prop is gonna to be touching what is our countertop. So you wanna be careful if it's on some surface that it could scuff up or damage or whatever. All right, so we're gonna plug this thing in. All right, so we have our bind plug plugged in here. Now I'm just gonna energize the circuit with the battery. Okay, so we've got a flashy light. I'm gonna press and hold this, and then I'm gonna bind. Got it. Okay. So now 
the bind is complete. We have an elevator and we have something else going on. Okay, throttle cut's not, not. Unplugging the bind plug. Now I'm going to give throttle, nothing, and then throttle cuts off. It's going backward. Throttle cuts on and we've tested. Okay, that servo is all the way up, so it makes me nervous. I gotta be careful about that. So I am going to quickly check and find out why. Unplug that aileron. I'm gonna plug in the elevator. Okay, so now when I move the elevator, yep. So in order to wire this up, you basically wire the aileron out and the elevator out to the respective control surfaces, okay? And that's how you do the delta wing, okay? So real quick, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, our throttle is backward, our ailerons are correct, our elevator is backward. And you see how that's popping and shifting around? That was weird. Mm -hmm. See that? I don't know, we'll have to look at that in a minute. So let's change the direction of travel on our elevator. So go over to reverse. Now that's going correct. Up, down, roll left, roll right. Okay, now there's gonna be a gain on one of these channels. I don't know what channel it is yet. I think it's on channel probably one because it's channel one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, there, it's on there. Okay, so that's gonna change the condition of our receiver, or excuse me, our flight controller. I just don't know what impact it's gonna have. There's nothing there. There's something there, and then there's something else there. You see how the light condition is fast flash, then nothing, then solid. So I don't know what the difference is. I'm gonna give some throttle, see if we have to wake up. Okay, so that's definitely backward. Throttle cut is on and tested. We need to switch two of the leads on the ESC. We went color for color, just if we were lucky, that never seems to work. Don't know why, it's just kind of a weird nuance of the electronics. You can change any of the two wires on an ESC and the output from your motor will be backward. Okay, we're gonna test this quick. Throttle cuts off. That's got some power. Let's check this out quick. I gotta, I gotta see this. Well, hold on. I gotta, I gotta strap the battery in before we get too far ahead of it. That's on 3S. I know. Jeez, that's gonna be nuts on 4S. 1300? Yeah, 1300, but it doesn't matter. It's the 3S is what. Okay, see what I was talking about with the size of oh. the battery? Look at the extra. A little excessive. It's like enough that it doesn't work. Mm. So we'll have to kind of get creative on that somehow. But I just need to work for now. So, hmm. What if I can go around the battery first and then I can do it like this. I don't know. It's just not gonna work for you. I just need to hold it in there so that I can test this. Next test I wanna do. First of all, is there any gains? No. Is there any gains? No. Is there any gains? No. I'm probably gonna have to turn that stabilization on. Okay, so throttle cut is off. This is what I wanna test. <laughs> That's nuts. That is gonna be so powerful. Oh my goodness. That thing was stuck to my hand at like third, uh, third throttle <laughs> on 3S. It's gonna be so fast. Oh boy. This will be fun to film. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, okay, so that being said, we gotta figure out why this thing isn't doing anything. I already know what's going on. I just don't know how to fix it yet. So on most of these stabilizers, there's, you see how the status light's flashing, then it's not, then it's solid. Okay, one of those three conditions are true for stabilizer on. We have to figure out which one is true for that because we're controlling that through auxiliary in. So that's gonna be like our gain, master gain or on off. Seven, eight, nine, 
So we're gonna pause real quick. We'll take a look at this and see what we need to do to make it work. Okay, so it turns out it was working. I just didn't notice because the gains were low. If you look at the control surfaces, they are moving, but I really gotta be aggressive. So I'm just gonna turn up the elevator access quite a bit. That's all the way up. See how crazy it is now? And then the aileron axis, I'll turn it all the way up. So then we'll, we'll definitely see it. But then as you can see, we can turn it off, but it's still working. And then we can turn it on the other mode, which is another mode. But you see it's still working. Even in the off setting, it's still evidently on a little bit. So as per typical, I think what we wanna do is we wanna probably go ahead and have some sort of a master gain and just have this most of the way up. So I think what we'll do is we'll go into, we'll go into our system setup, disconnect RF, whoops. We'll go to channel assign and we'll just make an assignment for auxiliary one to the knob, okay? And then we'll set that to D just so they're flip-flopped. Okay, so now I've got throttle cut on still, obviously Chinese screwed over there. And you do want to put this lengthwise. I was correct in my guess. Okay, so now it's sort of mounted. So if we turn the knob all the way up, it goes up and down, up, down, up, down. It's in the wrong direction though. So you'll see how, first of all, it, Okay, you can also go like this. One, two, and it relearns its home position. I'm gonna assign that to a switch as well so that I can quickly make a reset, okay? Like reset the conditions. Oh. Hmm, I don't know. I may have to play with that a little bit, but as long as you do it twice, then it'll be fine. So one is gonna be, it's correcting the wrong direction. So what do you do if it's correcting the wrong direction? Okay, let's, let's see, come on. I think what we need to do is we need to take the elevator gain and go from this way all the way to zero, oops, and then all the way back the other direction. So it's like a master gain one way or the other. So now it's just correcting the other direction. Up, down, up, down. Okay, so it's going the correct direction. Now I'm looking at this, as I lift the wing, it should go up, up. Now I'm looking at that, it should go up. Okay, so up, down, roll, roll. It's all correcting in the correct direction. So now the next question is, where do I wanna mount this thing? Because we're that close to being done. Let's peel off all my temporary stuff. Let's take a look at how big a 2200 is gonna be in here. Since we know this is working, we can unplug it. I don't know that our gains are correct, but we can adjust those a little bit later. We do know we want everything kind of facing forward and it'd be nice to be able to get to all that stuff, but the center of gravity is further back here. The instructions recommend putting it close to the center of gravity. I think I could, I could put this here, just kind of get it out of the way somewhat. There's quite a little bit of room. It would be nice if we had that underneath there. I think it, it might be worth it. I'm sorry, we gotta probably do that. I just want that wire to be contained so that it's not a problem. So you just have to take one of the two wings off and then feed that through. I could just see it wanting to flop. It should be pretty straightforward though. Once that's out, we can just slide that over and then slide this back over the top. Okay, oh yeah, that was easy. That is a really easy breakdown. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it is. So after all doing this without having had any instruction manual, you know what we're gonna have to do? What? We're gonna have to get the instruction manual so that we can figure out where the CG is. Oh. Because I have no clue, unless it's marked. Ooh, the last time we got a Zod, it was marked, wasn't it? No, that was... It was molded in it. Okay. That would be 
nice. Right there. Nice. So the CG's right there, right there, and right there. Okay, so it's super tail heavy right now, which makes sense, we have no battery in there. Okay, so this receiver actually doesn't need to be up front at all. It can be in the back. I don't know if it's gonna fit through that hole though. I may have to just unplug them and re-land the wires on the other side. It's actually probably better to just have it all back here. I think you were right. Um, so what I'll do is, uh, for the sake of the video, we'll pause and I'll go over plugging it all back in. Okay, so one, two, three, and four, okay? Except four isn't even right, that's six. <laughs> I was just gonna make a note on here and I'm thinking, how am I gonna be able to read that? It's gonna be hard to read and I don't wanna have to reverse engineer all this. So I'm just gonna do it the easy way, the lazy way. And then I can just pull everything back through one at a time and make it quite easy. Okay, so this will be like number one is throttle. Then this all has to get moved. It's only two wires that have to get disconnected to pull this through. So I'm just gonna number them like one and two. Okay, so one and two. Then I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I was just thinking I could do that off camera, but then I'm kind of doing you guys a disservice for not sharing that aspect of it. So that's number two, so it's the second pin over. And then this is the first pin over, or the first set of pins. Now we shouldn't have to re-engineer re all that. We just have to get these little jumpers plugged back in. I like to try to keep them flat when I get them nice, because then the cable management looks really, really pleasing. Okay, so I have number six is right here. which is actually not the last one, because the last one's PPM. Okay, then this is, uh, this one was number three. So there's number three. <clears throat> and you're thinking to yourself probably at this point, wow, how did you know it was number three, Brian? You never talked about that. We just got lucky. <laughs> the way you would know is you would look in your monitor mode, and you would say aileron elevator. So throttle, aileron elevator, throttle, aileron elevator. And then nothing, nothing, auxiliary one, nothing, nothing, auxiliary one. So that's how you do that, at least on a spectrum. Of course, this is a DSMX receiver. All right, so now we need to mount this thing close to the center of gravity and we need the ESC to be kind of secured so it's not gonna be in the way or tangled up with other stuff. At this point, I feel like these cables are somewhat tangly a little bit the way we've done it. I'd like to have this stabilizer. Do we have the, the wires were back before? Yes. And we can actually do that either way. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna untangle this one wire though. In fact, we know that they're numbered, so we can just lay those down. I'm trying to make it so it looks nice. I can actually flip that. This thing could be flipped. Now, this did come with two double-sided tapes. I'm not sure why they give you two, but it's nice because now I can use one for the receiver and then one for the stabilizer itself. Oh, dang, that was a really crappy job of centering it. So this will help vibration, isolation, and I've never figured out what the difference is between these two different types of backing, but like this stuff comes off extremely easy. And then this stuff comes off terribly. It always does every time I get a plane. <laughs> so I have to get X-Acto knife and kind of get in there and pop it free. The X-Acto knife usually works though. So if you have a chance to do it, wait and do the white backing last. It'll be a lot easier to peel off once you get it applied. So what I mean by using an X-Acto knife is you can come in here and just kind of like, just do that. See, it, it peels it then, kind of forces it to come out. You can see we sacrificed this little piece right there of the adhesive. That's the direction we had it before. Mm -hmm. So 
I want to be close to the CG. The CG is right here. So as close to the CG as possible is right there, both laterally and this way. Okay, so both directions. So the ESC line is kind of tangly now a little bit, which is unfortunate, but it's just the way it goes sometimes. This can be positioned anywhere. This is not position, it's not aware of its position at all, and it's, it doesn't care. But we are still gonna stick it down just so it looks nice and doesn't get in the way of anything. Just trying to get my cable management done as I go. There we go. Okay, so we've got all that. These two antenna, the diversity antenna should be at 90 degrees of one another. But I'm not really holding my breath on that because it doesn't really make that big of a difference. I didn't get that down very straight, did I now? That seems pretty straight now. I thought I had it pretty straight. All right, so we're gonna stick this one down now. Try to take my own advice here from just a minute ago. Is it like a different kind it's of? It's a different pieces? type of backing. I don't understand it. So this is the RM601 micro receiver. So yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that anymore. These little micro receivers are super light though. I've used them on a couple of different planes. They're not my go-to, but they're very inexpensive. So that's nice if you're trying to keep things on a budget. Just stick that down. Okay, so now I need to plug in my leads from the actual wings. Okay, so this one was number two. So it's like the one that's going on the second set of pins. Okay, which happens to be the elevator output. Not that it really matters. That's not correct anyway. And then this one was number one. I can tell from my little pencil mark. The pencil works nice because you can actually mark the plastic housing with that lead will show up a little bit or that graphite will show up. Okay, so now it's plugged in. So we have a nice clean setup. Still somewhat serviceable if you need to get at it. I'd like to see that not shift, but I can live with it too. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now this can get plopped down. Now we're pretty much at a point where we can uh, go ahead and test some more and we'll be flying soon. So stay tuned. Okay, so after some time struggling to get this strap to work, it's just way too long. There's no getting around it. So I came up with a pretty easy solution that's gonna get us what we need, which is being able to use this strap. It's a very high quality strap. If you have a regular office stapler, it works pretty good. You staple the excess. You want this to stay out. And then that holds through the fabric and won't damage your battery, obviously. You get a little extra here, that's fine. Then when you slide this down, okay, you can put the battery approximately where you want. This goes through and then you can pull that and then stick this down. Now I might need to adjust mine a little bit, but you can, you can basically hold that battery in position. I'd like it to be just a bit tighter. So you might want to go a little bit more than what I did, but the idea is before it was just totally unusable because you could never get to where you would actually have a bite. You had to have a battery about three times bigger. And I'm like, how would you do that? There's only so much room in this cabinet. So, and that's with the battery vertical, by the way. And there you have it. Okay, so um, also, I don't know if you guys paid close attention when we were doing that. I wrote on there where to position the battery, okay? So the front and the back, and it's holding still. So it's not falling out. You gotta remember, when you're flying airplanes, there's not sudden stops until you're landing, okay? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you land before you meant to, but it does happen in that way. Okay, so now that we have that stabilizer turned on, we have it positioned. Now we have to do our final checks. Okay, so up is up, down is down. So I'm just looking at the surface. I wanna make sure it goes down. 
Up is up, down is down, roll up, roll up. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can show you guys this. So looking at the end of the plane, up is up, down is down. Up is up, down is down. Roll, 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 okay? So as you can see, what's happening is when I give environmental impact or simulate environmental impact like wind, then it moves and it moves against the direction of that environmental impact. So now when I pull back on the stick, it goes up. When I push down on the stick, it goes down. When I roll left, it rolls left. When I roll right, it rolls right. Okay, so everything is working. Obviously the throttle cut has been tested, but we're gonna test that again. Right now, throttle cut's off. Throttle stick was up a few clicks. That's why I use a throttle cut. Oh, that is insane. That was like 30%, just so you guys know. And there's stabilizer, off, and then hold, which I don't exactly know what the difference is, but one of them has a flashing light. One has a solid light, one has a flashing light. Okay, so this is like off. This is the gain one direction master and then the gain one direction master. Okay, let me show this. The gain one direction master gain all the way up, off the gain all the way the other direction and then off. So we're gonna start somewhere that it's moving in the right direction, okay? I think hold is gonna be more like auto leveling as well, but we'll just have to honestly check it and find out. Okay, so throttle cut is on. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and get set up to fly it. If you wanna buy this thing for your very own, check the links in the video description. We'll show all the different devices that we got. Um, obviously the receiver itself, we'll show the little stabilizer we used and then everything else came with this plane with the exception of the battery, which is a 4S Gen 2, uh, 2200 in this case, 30C pack. So you could use a Gen 1 just fine, or you could use a variety of other packs, but we will link to what we used in this. And then of course we're using the NX8, which has been very good for us. We've been very happy with it. You wouldn't need the eight channels for this configuration. You could easily do it with the NX6. And obviously, as usual, if you wanna help support us financially, the small contributions that you make through PayPal or through Patreon are always much appreciated. But the best way you can support us is by watching, liking, subscribing, and then buying the beautiful planes, the ones that you really like through the video description links. And that is the best way that you can help support us and keep this channel uh, running along. So thanks for watching guys, come back for more. Okay, so we're gonna set up dual rates in Expo from the function list. Scroll down to DR and Expo. And we only have to worry about ailerons and elevator on this plane because there's no rudder. So we're gonna go into ailerons. We're gonna assign it to switch F. That's right there. Okay, so we got it on switch F. We do have a stabilizer on this plane, but I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna work. So I'm gonna set it to five. And then I'm gonna set it to 10. Then I'm gonna set it to 20. Actually, we're gonna go to like 30. We're gonna have a lot more. And then we'll drop the rates down to like 80. That's gonna be very much less control. This is gonna be where we start and this is gonna be where we go if we don't have enough control, okay? Same thing with elevator, set it to switch F. We'll put 5% Expo in there. Then we'll do 10%. And then we'll do like 30 and we'll drop the rates down. Let's actually do 75 on both of them. So we're gonna have our full 100% and 10% expo for both ailerons and elevator. Since this is just basically a, a bank and yank setup, that's all we need. So throttle cuts on. Thanks for watching guys. Sorry we forgot to review that. Don't forget to buy this stuff from the links in the video description below. Come back for more.